For many centuries, the world was explained through the laws of Isaac Newton and classical physics. Chaos theory questions this deterministic vision. Not everything is predictable anymore. Chaos isn't what you think it is. It not only destroys order, it can also create it. Imagine a storm that knocks down weak tents, but leaves a solid cabin standing. That cabin then looks chosen. In physics, we usually treat chaos like a blender that ruins delicate patterns. Yet sometimes chaos acts like a filter. It wipes away most details and keeps only the features that can survive repeated random hits. In this video, we'll follow a laser experiment with moving nanoparticles and see an unexpected quantum pattern grow. Then, we'll ask what that might mean for nature itself, order and symmetry. The more we learn about nature, the more we find rules that repeat. Those repeating rules often come from symmetry, meaning you can change something and the outcome stays the same. In modern physics, symmetry is not just decoration. The standard model is built from symmetry groups that organize particles and forces. General relativity also leans on symmetry because it treats space and time with consistent, coordinate, independent rules. This is elegant, but it is also unsettling. Why these symmetries? Why not others? We often talk as if the symmetries were planted into reality from the start, as the universe came with a finished rulebook. But that is not really an explanation. If anything, it pushes the mystery down a level. Chaos offers a different angle. Chaos is not only disorder, it is a process that erases information. In a chaotic system, tiny details get scrambled fast. What survives that scrambling may be the only thing we can observe as a stable law. So the clean symmetries we admire might be the leftovers of something far messier underneath. If the deeper layer is noisy enough, it may show us only the most robust patterns. We then label those survivors as fundamental. If that is true, then symmetries are not arbitrary gifts. They are what remains after everything else has been erased. Creation of light from chaos. In 1980, Han and collaborators wrote a paper with a title that sounds impossible. Creation of light from chaos. Their claim is simple. Suppose there is some deeper substrate that behaves chaotically, where small differences quickly blow up. In that environment, most fine details cannot last. They get mixed and effectively forgotten. But not everything is lost. Some features are stable under the scrambling. Some can even be amplified by repeated chaotic interactions. They even suggested that symmetries like those in particle physics could emerge this way. The survivors tend to look like symmetries, because symmetries are patterns that stay the same under many transformations. In this view, chaos washes out what is specific and keeps what is universal. If that is right, then the laws we see might not be fundamental at all. They might be emergent rules, like the shape a riverbed takes after many floods. Chaos is not the opposite of law. It can be the machine that produces law. This idea never became mainstream. Physics has a habit of finding odd effects and then moving on. But a recent experiment makes the basic mechanism feel less like a metaphor and more like a fact. It even suggests that chaos could be the origin of almost everything we call law in a way that echoes old creation stories, but with equations instead of poetry. The nanoparticle experiment. Researchers took a linearly polarized laser, meaning its electric field wiggles in one fixed plane. They sent it into a glass container filled with nanoparticles. The particles are not arranged. They drift and jitter randomly because of heat, like a crowd that never stops moving. Each nanoparticle scatters light. With so many random scatterings, you would expect the outgoing light to be random too. You would not expect a stable, directional memory of polarization. But that is exactly what they saw. The direction in which the light leaves the container is linked to how the polarization behaves. The outgoing electric field rotates differently depending on the direction you look. The particles are still chaotic, so this is not an ordering effect. The key is that the correlation exists at the smallest scale. A single photon scattering from a single nanoparticle can pick up a tiny, direction-dependent twist in polarization. Normally, many random events would average that away. Here, the statistics do the opposite. The repeated random motion suppresses the messy parts that vary and boosts the parts that repeat. Chaos acts like a sieve. 
it lets most details fall through and it keeps the one structure that can stack up into something you can measure on a macroscopic scale. Notice what matters here. The particles stay disordered the whole time, and yet the pattern is steady. The disorder is not the problem to eliminate. It is the tool that makes the subtle correlation dominate the average, when noise helps, not hurts. This result clashes with a common story. Quantum effects are fragile and die in messy environments. That story is why quantum computers are hard. A qubit can hold a delicate superposition, but only until random interactions scramble it. We expect the same fate for most quantum patterns once many particles are involved. Those nudges are everywhere. There is the cosmic microwave background. There are stray fields, air molecules, and vibrations in the floor. There is a truck outside. There is Kevin from accounting microwaving lunch. In most setups, all that noise causes decoherence, and the system loses the phase relationships that make quantum behavior special. We spend huge effort building shields, cooling systems, and vacuum chambers precisely to keep that chaos away. But the nanoparticle experiment shows a loophole. Some quantum correlations do not merely survive noise, they can become stronger because of it. The randomness keeps throwing away the parts that do not match, while the consistent part stacks up. It is like shaking a box of mixed pieces until the ones with the same shape lock together. Noise is still destructive in many cases. The point is narrower and more interesting. Some quantum signatures are stable under chaos, and those are the ones that can grow large enough for us to see. In other words, the random kicks are not only background damage. In this case, they are part of the mechanism that makes the signal stand out, from lab bench to living cells. If randomness can amplify a quantum effect, one door is practical. It hints at materials or sensors where disorder is not the enemy, but part of the mechanism. Instead of fighting imperfections, you would use them to filter and boost the signal you want. The other door is biology, and this is where things get spicy. A famous proposal by Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff suggests that consciousness might involve quantum effects inside microtubules, large structures in brain cells. Many physicists dismiss this quickly. The brain is warm, wet, and noisy, so quantum effects should decohere instantly. The new result does not prove their idea. It does not even rescue it. But it does weaken the blanket argument that noise kills everything quantum. In some systems, the random interactions are the very reason a correlation becomes robust enough to notice. This overlap of quantum order and chaos is still understudied. Earlier works are showing that certain kinds of noise can stabilize states or help maintain coherence. Yet the big implications are often ignored, as if we are embarrassed by what we just learned. Physicists are very good at discovering surprises, and then politely pretending they are minor details. Some researchers call this noise-assisted behavior, where the right kind of randomness protects or even improves a quantum process. Why the universe likes one, two, three. Zoom out to the big mystery. The standard model symmetries are written as U, one, SU, two, and SU, three. You don't need the math to notice the pattern. One, two, three. They are remarkably simple. For decades, physicists hunted for bigger symmetries that would unify everything with groups like SU, five, SO, 10, or E8. But bigger symmetry usually means extra predictions, and many of those have failed. Whole families of grand unified ideas have been pushed into corners or ruled out. So maybe we should ask a different question. Why are the symmetries so small and clean? If chaos is doing the selecting, the answer is natural. The simplest symmetries are the hardest to break. They survive repeated random hits, while fancy structures fall apart. Chaos strips away the decorations and leaves the bare framework that keeps working. And if order is just what survives chaos, it also explains why I wear the same shirt every day. I'm letting entropy do its job. Hot on the trail of a theory of everything, I find that idea hard to ignore. So the next time you hear the word chaos, don't picture only ruin. Picture selection. A chaotic world can erase countless possibilities and leave a few stable patterns behind. That laser experiment is a small window into that idea, because random motion did not kill the quantum effect. It made the effect louder in a clearly measurable way. 
If nature works this way more broadly, then the symmetries we treat as sacred might be survivors, not commandments. Keep an eye on this space because it could reshape how we search for deeper laws. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.